You know, for 27 years, I was an atheist. I've wanted to tackle this particular idea for quite some time now. This is a common theme among evangelicals who previously didn't have a belief in God or gods. They call themselves atheists, when more often than not, they're casual non-believers or just non-believers by default. I've always said that there are three types of believers and non-believers, the habitual, the emotional, and the philosophical. The habitual non-believer or believer has never really thought about her belief or lack thereof in God. It's just the way they've always been, having grown up in a religious or atheist home, respectively. The emotional non-believer or believer believes for mostly emotional reasons, irrational anger at a God who doesn't exist, or the comfort afforded the existentially troubled believer. The philosophical non-believer or believer is someone who has really looked into the question, examined both sides, heard all the arguments, investigated the claims, and dispassionately come to a conclusion, putting what one wants to be true aside and following the evidence wherever it leads. This is not where Frankie was coming from, as he'll let slip shortly. I thought anyone who believed in a god or gods was, well, stupid. I'm not sure Frank knows what the word atheist means. What he's describing here is a, oh, what's the, an asshole. Sure, I mock and satirize religion and the religious for a living. Much of it is laughable and silly, but I've never thought that the religious are particularly stupid. Perhaps that's because I used to be super religious and I know I'm not stupid. But also because I'm not a casual atheist or atheist by default. I'm a philosophical non-believer, so I know the great theist writers and philosophers who are clearly not stupid. I think Frank was just a dick. Or uneducated, naive, gullible, or just into the gig for money, sex, and power. I mean, after hold all, that, everyone knows. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did, did he just say that he thought people got into religion for sex? Is, is, he, is he talking about Catholic priests? Or uh, of, of all the reasons that people might get into religion, sex has, has never even occurred to me. What, what does Frank know that we don't? Are, are we all missing out on something here? I mean, I get that people are, are afraid of death, that they have tremendous existential angst. They, you know, they find the world a horrible, cruel place and they need consolation. But I have never met a, a Christian who's, you know, who said, I came to Jesus because I couldn't find another way to get a rusty trombone or a dirty Sanchez. No Christian has ever told me that the only way to get a Cincinnati bow tie, camel toe slide, or a rattlesnake wiggle was by wearing a crucifix. And of course, Frank has left us completely hanging here, pun intended, because he's dead. I can't even email him, and John Edward is not taking my calls, or returning them for that matter. Trust me, I have been on him like Father O'Reilly on little Bobby Dickinson. Well, everyone knows that religion is just a psychological crutch for intellectual weaklings, right? Again, I, I just think Frank was a jerk. Almost everyone who genuinely and deeply believes in something does so for reasons. The only question is, are those reasons sound, reasonable, and worthy of our assent? Have you questioned those reasons, investigated them dispassionately and fearlessly? If not, it's probably not due to an intellectual deficit, but, I don't know, a, a general disinterest in the topic altogether, or 100 other possible reasons, including the potential utter destruction of one's current life, family life in particular. Atheist Frank was clearly not a thinker or even a person of empathy. For the casual or habitual believer, who the fuck cares one way or the other? That's not intellectual weakness, though. It might be, it might be lazy or apathetic, but intellectually weak? Again, I make fun of belief professionally. I mock, ridicule, laugh at believers and their silly arguments all the time, but I do so because I believe that's what the ideas deserve, not the people. If I thought believers were intellectual weaklings making intellectual arguments like I do week after week to persuade them otherwise, would be pretty stupid, wouldn't it? 
Post Dick Frank goes on. I set out to disprove theism, which I didn't think would take very long. And there's our first clue as to how utterly thoughtless Frank's atheism was. Any knowledgeable atheist knows that you can't disprove theism. The best you can do is hope to demonstrate a complete lack of evidence for the proposition that the God of the Bible exists. And you can't even do that if we're talking about a deist God. Go on, Frank. But I ran into some difficulties along the way. <laughs> that does deserve a chuckle. Difficulties like Aristotle, Augustine, Aquinas. And there's your proof that Frank was never anything but a casual, habitual atheist. He didn't know Aristotle, Augustine, or Aquinas? What exactly did you know of theism, Frank? He, can, he can't tell us because he's, he's, he's dead now. But, but these are the kinds of people believers offer up to us as having previously been atheist. Assholes who look down their noses at believers certain they're stupid and intellectually weak, all the while not even knowing the arguments of Aristotle, Augustine, or Aquafina. Please. In other interviews, Frank talked about his atheism being emotionally motivated, especially after an injury on the field instantly ended his Major League Baseball career. What was really motivating it was anger. How could there be a loving God who allowed this, his injury, to happen? Since becoming an atheist in 1992, I have not once asked, how could there be a loving God who allows X or Y to happen when experiencing hard times? because I don't believe in a loving God and have absolutely no expectation of such a being protecting and caring for me. Frank was an atheist, my spectacular ass. Frank was a casual, habitual non-believer at best, and I'm not even sure I believe that. In part two, we'll get into Frank's four new arguments for God's existence, none of which are really new, just New to him, apparently, because he'd never really taken the topic seriously or thought about it critically, and, and never did, as far as I can tell. Until then, for PragerFU, I'm me. Thanks for watching, and go Devils! <laughs> <laughs>